So if you're new to Unity or if you've been using it for some time now, you might have actually realized how deep it is and how much there is to learn. So in this video, I'm going to share 5 tips and tricks you can use while working on your projects and I'm also challenging you to share all of your tips and tricks in the comment section of this video so we can all keep learning as we go. And now with that being said, let's go ahead and learn some new stuff in Unity. <laughs> Hey guys, Sam here. So if you're new to the channel, you might be wondering what we actually do here. And we mainly make game development content and focus on Unity as our primary engine, just like we do in this video. That means you can find a bunch of beginner friendly tutorials, tips and tricks videos like this one, and a bunch of showcases, level designs and stuff like that. So if you like what you're seeing right now, consider subscribing so you stay up to tune for new content. And also make sure to give this video a thumbs up to show some support and help us reach the like goal of 200 likes for this video. And before starting, I would also like to give a huge shout out to Richard Stance, Cupola, Trombear MCP and all of our other Patreons for making this video come true. You guys are awesome. If you would like to help us make more content as well, you can visit our Patreon page through the link in the description. But now, let's get started. So first and foremost, we're gonna take a look at 2D in Unity. As you might know, I just posted my first video ever to Unity's official YouTube channel. I know, self-promotion, yep, here we go. And where we basically take a look at the brand new SVG feature in Unity. And if you wanna watch that video later too, I will leave a link to it in the description. So the video is basically about support for for SVG assets in Unity, and that's what I want to talk about now. So, Unity does recommend you to enable a feature called MSAA, or multi-sample anti-aliasing, when you actually use SVG assets in your project. And that's simply because MSAA helps giving smoother outlines to your SVG sprites and can be super useful. You can enable MSAA in Unity if you go to Edit, enter Project Settings, and then Quality, because in here you will find a property that is named anti-aliasing, in which you can pick one of the multi-sample options. And now when you import SVG files into your project and use them in your game, you will quickly realize that they are a lot more smooth than what they actually used to be. And moving on to number two, let us talk about rigid bodies. So most of us know them as components that basically add gravity and physics to our objects, which is true, right? But did you know that you can also use rigid bodies to detect if an object collides with something else in your scene while it's actually moving? Because you can. A Twitter user actually tweeted about this, which reminded me of this tip. So you can simply use a function from the rigid body component that is called sweep test, which will return a boolean with value true if your object actually hits something while it's moving, which is just fantastic to use. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna leave a link to the official documentation page for this function in the description box of this video so you can check it out if you wanna use it. And for number three in our list, let's talk about the high definition render pipeline. Oh boy, here we go. So as most of you already know, Unity offers a few templates which we can use with the new scriptable render pipeline, one being the HDRP or High Definition Render Pipeline. By the way, let me know in the comments, is it templates or templates? I used to say templates and now I hear this template, so I'm just getting confused, please let me know. So one of the things that a lot of people seem to forget is that Unity also gives us the option to create a HDRP preset by ourselves, which gives the option to set up our own graphical preferences, and it's super simple to do as well. We can simply go anywhere in our project tab, then right click, and then pick create, go into rendering, and select high definition render pipeline asset. We're also free to rename this asset as we wish to, but most importantly, we have to go into edit, and then enter project settings, and then go to graphics. We can now drag and drop the HDRP asset that we just created into the scriptable render pipeline settings field in the inspector. And now we can highlight the asset in the project tab and in the inspector window, we can now edit all of these settings as we wish to. This enables the option to make sure all of our graphical settings in the project are suited after our own preferences. And now moving on to the fourth tip of today, we'll get into the shader graph feature in Unity. I know that you guys really like shader graph, by the way. And speaking of which, let me know in the comments if you wanna see more shader graph tutorials 
videos on this channel. I think they're pretty fun and cool to make. So we're just gonna take a quick look at one basic thing that many seem to miss when learning the shader graph tool. So if you simply add a new node into the editor and then drag the output to an empty field and let the mouse button go, it'll automatically bring up the node menu. And then you can pick your node in here and then it will create that node you picked. But most importantly, it will also automatically assign the output of the previous node into the input of the new node. It's like a little neat trick you can use while creating some shaders because it really does simplify the workflow. And now last but not least, let's also take a quick look at the console in Unity. While technically speaking, we'll see how we can use markup to design our debug logs and prints a little nicer instead of having them so dull. And it's not just to have some eye candy in the Unity editor, but it's also useful for us to interpret and understand the logs differently. So basically when you're coding, you can type in debug.log and then your message as usual, and that will print it out normally, right? But let's also add some colors to this. So if you're used to HTML and CSS, you might actually remember the tagline color, which is typed this way. Well, we can basically first say, for example, color equal to red, and then write our initial message we wish to log. Now we can close the color tag by using slash color and then let Unity print this. And now we can actually go back to Unity and enter the console and then we can start playing the game and you will see that Unity will print our message but in red. And obviously one of the most important tips is actually in this message right here. No really, if you join our Discord server you can expect to see a lot of like-minded people, a bunch of memes, some Unity stuff and a lot of anime girl. <laughs> All right, so that is pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed watching and found this helpful. If you did and wanna see more videos like this, make sure to give this video a thumbs up to show some support and hit the subscribe button to not miss out on new content. And so the question of the day is this, what are your favorite tips and tricks that you would like to share with everyone else watching the content? Because don't forget that some of the best tips and tricks come from you, the community. So let us know in the comments. Now, with that being said, thank you guys again for watching and I look forward to see you in the comment section and in our Discord server. See you guys, peace out. Açtım döktüm içimi kitap gibi okudum bir